Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how the Core i7-2600 performs in 2020. Today we're going to be taking a look at the performance and how well it does against modern gaming, despite the fact that it is almost a decade old. It's pretty close to a decade old. But before we take a look at the performance of the i7-2600, we need to take a look at the other components that are going to make this all possible. Now I know that this is technically a 2600K, not a 2600, but we're going to be running it at stock speed, so the performance will be very similar to an i7-2600 non-K. So let's take a look at the rest of the components that we're going to be using. So first off, we're going to be using this Gigabyte Z68 motherboard. This is a pretty nice uh, second gen motherboard and even though this is a K CPU we're not going to be overclocking it and I'll explain why in a second. But this motherboard will allow us to unlock the full potential of an i7-2600. Next is the RAM and we're going to be using 16 gigs of DDR3 1333 megahertz RAM. Uh, 16 gigs is the recommended amount for a gaming machine in 2020 and I could definitely agree with that because my main system tends to use over 8 gigs of of RAM without even having to launch a game. So to give the 2600 the best chance, we're going to be using 16 gigs of RAM. Next for the storage, we're going to be using a thick 90 gig SSD and an external one terabyte hard drive. And the reason I'm going with this setup is because, well, I, I just can't fit all the games on a 90 gig SSD, so I had to put them on a 1 terabyte external hard drive. Next is a graphics card, and we're going to be using a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. Uh, pretend the card that you're seeing here is a 1060, uh, it's currently sitting in my main PC, so I have to grab the 1060 out of that. With the 1060, there hopefully shouldn't be any bottlenecks that happen. For the power supply, we're going to be using this dinky looking uh, 350 watt power power supply. Now I've had this power supply for a long time, it's actually done a pretty good job. Uh, it's it's pretty small looking because I think it's a micro ATX power supply because it's, it's even smaller than SFX and we're going to be using that to power our 2600K and 1060. And finally the cooler which is just an Intel stock cooler and this is one of the reasons why we're not going to overclock the 2600K uh, because of the stock cooler and because uh, the power supply that we're using only has a 4 pin CPU connector and it's probably better to uh, have a full 8 pin power connector if we're going to be doing any sort of overclocking. So uh, now that we have showcased all the parts that we're going to be using for this testing, let's go ahead and assemble the test bench and let's do some benchmarks. I've got it all set up and the way that I have the RAM configured is actually uh, correct. So according to the manual, these two slots here, yeah, these two slots here, uh, you put the two RAM sticks in there to get dual channel. And it's not, it's not this slot and then like this slot, like it is most boards, it's these two. So this is all correct. And
So, I am actually surprised how well the i7-2600 did. I knew that the 2600 was a good CPU, but I didn't think it would still be this good for modern gaming. And it's impressive, because it didn't really struggle in any titles. It got 60 FPS in the majority of them, with a 1060. And now I can see why most of the $600 eBay gaming PCs have an i7-2600 with a 1060. It's a very good combo, surprisingly, and... And I don't even think the 2600 told him back the 1060 at all. So, uh, what can we conclude from this? Uh, the i7-2600 is still a very good CPU, which is probably why you can still buy one for 70 to $80. And honestly, if you already have the motherboard or you can get the motherboard cheap, like a Dell OEM motherboard, for example, you could slap an i7-2600 into that. Or even if you just have an Optiplex, you can get a super cheap, like, i3 Optiplex. Put in the i put upgrade to an i7-2600 and then upgrade the graphics card and you have a perfectly good gaming system for like under $300. So I may try that, but it seems like prices for electronics online are seeing are starting to go up a little bit. So probably won't be for a while until I do that. So hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next time. Whenever that is.